Hi there, welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Ghost Prime. I take a look at Generation 1 Triple Changer Octane. He was released in 1986 and pre premiered in the Season 3 episode, The Five Faces of Darkness, but only as a background character. He was also shown scrambling for Energon in one of those episodes of The Five Faces of Darkness. But he did have a standout episode in Thief of the, Thief of the Night where he was stealing Energon from the nation of Carbomia. Now, that is a pivotal episode because the, that is the reason Casey Kasem left. That's another story. But in that episode, it, it was him and Trypticon trying to get power to overthrow the Decepticons and him become a leader. Kind of a very Starscream-y thing to do, but, you know, Starscream wasn't around then. But speaking of Starscream, there was another episode, which is one of my absolute favorite episodes. And I remember this even as a child. Super stood out to me. And that is him and Sandstorm. And this is an episode, Starscream's Ghost. Now, because of what happened in Thief in the Night, he was ousted from the Decepticons. And he was on the run. And Galvatron had sent bounty hunters to go look for him to, to basically take him out. And he was seeking asylum with the Autobots that met up with uh, Sandstorm. And they, I want to say, were friends, but they were very amicable. And they even went to a restaurant together and were talking uh, on the same level. And I thought that was really cool as a kid to see a Decepticon and an Autobot actually converse back and forth without just randomly fighting. Because in the 80s, it was good guys, bad guys. There wasn't like, it was a decision, you know? Like, you either follow this one or follow this one. It was it was a little different than that. It wasn't black and white. And that sort of put, added a little shade of gray to the whole thing. And that interested me as a child. But I digress. This figure is a very... Cool figure, and I absolutely love him, especially for this really cool wingspan. So anyway, please like, subscribe, leave me a comment, tell me what you think about him, and without any further ado, let's get to the review. All right, and we're going to start by looking at him in tanker mode, because that's what he is in the box. Of course, I don't have the box for this guy, so just this image here is going to have to suffice. Uh, one of these days, I would like to complete this this guy. Uh, and here's a look at the instruction sheet real quick so you can see just how this guy actually transforms. And here he is in tanker mode. I love this sticker on the back. Now, one of the things you can tell, first off, there is a ton of chrome. One of the things you want to look out for on this figure is chrome wear. He's super known for his chrome wear. And this is his truck mode. In my opinion, this is not his best mode. He's missing uh, you know, a lot of detail here and here. He has his arms just kind of hanging out there on the side. They, like they couldn't really figure out a good place to put them. Uh, personally, I don't like the configuration for the arms there, but that's the way it's supposed to be. Now, he does come with a gun, but if you really want to, you can stick the gun here like that so he could be armed. And he comes with a shield, is what this is going to be as a robot mode. If I get this open, it's, it becomes uh, a shield of sorts. I have a different use for this, which I will go over in robot mode. So those are the two things. And really, I guess you could put it here like this. Uh, but it looks kind of silly on a, ta ta a tanker truck. Uh, but I do like the sticker detail. Let me just pick that up real quick and get the camera in there. I like all this detail here. These stickers are really awesome. Really dig the details, the stickers on it. Like, I love this. The Septagon logo there are just so cool, and I mentioned that. I mean, really, really cool. So what I, you know, this is supposed to be sort of the gas tanks. What I like to do with this is, and it's actually on the box, too, is just kind of move it like that. Or maybe, excuse me, move these up a little bit. Then kind of, kind of move it, kind of move it like that. And that looks a little bit more out of the way for me. Um, rather than just hanging off there to the side. And you could still put the gun in. I think it looks a little better of a gun mount for a, for a truck if it were to mount like that. I think a little bit more menacing. But, get this out of the way, he does roll pretty well. No rubber to speak of, but he has, so he has these wheels here on the bottom. And then he has front wheels here. These don't stay in super well. And then these here. These are faux wheels in the back. But still very, very cool. Let's put that other arm in the same position. And 
leave that like that. Get you back in there. So kind of how I like it. And let's do a quick size comparison. Here he is with his buddy Sandstorm. So you get an idea of just how those two sides compare. They're relatively the same size. Uh, he is a bit longer, but different proportions. Obviously, don't scale at all, but what is scale in G1, right? So getting this guy into jet mode is actually fairly straightforward. It's not super hard at all. Uh, first thing we're going to want to do is carefully take off this piece here, which just just kind of frictions in via these two pieces right here, kind of clips on the side. You can see this is totally chrome. And I do have a little bit of chrome wear. Uh, this is not my original. I bought it on the secondary market. But it's an exceptional shape. You see this super worn down. Um, so you have this piece here, which is just the main body. So I'll go ahead and just turn that around. Take, you've seen this happen a bunch of times as I was maneuvering this thing. Just go ahead and put these not quite all the way, like I was trying to do here to kind of get that piece in. For some reason these things never work on camera as well as they do off camera. Based the reaching around it. So there we go. Let's go ahead and put that right there. Take the tail rudders, go ahead and stick that or tail wings and go put that out there just like that. So you have something that looks like this. Pretty simple so far. I'm going to take the arms. I think we're going to move them all the way down and go ahead and extend them back all the way straight. And get those out of the way. So you're going to take the sides of the tanker here, open those up like that, and then go ahead and take the legs or the wheels, as it were, move those around, and then the arms and wings, let's do it on the side, maybe you can see it better. So the wings come around, the arms go under. Make sure you have all that lined up correctly. Same thing, arms straight, wings around. If you have it all lined up correctly, they, they sit slot really nicely in there. And there you have his jet mode. Now as a, uh, like as a passenger liner, um, but uh, passenger jet, but as, as it is, it looks really good. I think this is actually a really decent uh, sculpt or load. Um, I think it looks pretty good. You do have the truck on the bottom there, but overall it works. I can get up close on it. You'll see some of that sticker detail. You do have the wheels on top, which is kind of weird, but overall I think it, it's definitely something that, that actually does a good job. I like the, the sticker detail, how sort of cartoony for the, the windows there and all this, you know, these marks make it look fast. I, I think, you know, it looks pretty cool. Even how they have the wing shape on the underside of the chrome tanker part with the stickers too. Again, just really selling that that plane mode. I think it looks just awesome. Really very cool. And and these being the engines, the arms, I think, you know, with a little bit of a suspension of disbelief, not bad. Again, you just sort of kind of get this in there, I think, or maybe on the underside. Uh, but then you won't be able to put it down. That you can fly it around like that if you so desire. There's not really anything you could do with, it, with this piece at all. They just kind of sit off to the side. But hey, this is G1. So uh, let's see a comparison. There he is again with his buddy, Sandstorm. Ah. Get an idea of how those two scale with each other. I right, get a little different camera angle on this. We're going to go ahead and transform this into his robot mode. So you're going to want to go ahead and split the tail. Take this wing out. Set that aside. The tail wings go up or down rather than like this. Go ahead and just fold those back in. Now they may not stay while you're doing the transformation, but that's just the way it is. Uh, you go ahead and take this side here where the wheels are and just fold that around. So then you go ahead and you could spread these open. Take the wings, kind of move those up. And what's going to happen here is we're going to need to move these completely out of the way because these are going to have to go behind these. So these actually go up and then this could come like that. So go ahead and move that out of the way. This could come up on this rotation like so. And then you go ahead and just put that back that way. 
that fits. Take this whole chest piece here, down and around, revealing the head, which if for some reason won't focus, stay there. And take the arms, kind of put them like this position here. And move that into position. These are tight joints on mine. That wings go up like that. And this is his robot mode. Uh, in robot mode, this piece here can become very weak over time and make him fall forward or backwards. Uh, there's a, a remedy for that. Mine is kind of loose. It does stand, but I don't want to put it on the spinner because it will definitely fall. I mean, I've come and seen my uh, come in my my room here, my collection room, and seen him forward with his like legs like this. So it does happen. It doesn't lock in place. That is an issue. But man, let's look at this head sculpt because if I get that in focus, I really really like this head sculpt. I just love it. I think it's very, very cool. Such a cool head sculpt design. Moving into that chest, the Septagon logo right there, the arms, this gigantic wingspan. It's just wicked cool. Right, and so with his accessories, he does have this giant piece here that does become a shield of sorts. You just go ahead and stick it on right there. He has these pegs on either side that you can just stick on his arm. His gun will fit into his fist quite well, like that. Oh, articulation-wise, it's, it's just the arms. They, they would do 360. The wings could move all the way out of the way. And he does have a double-jointed elbow. But that's the extent of his articulation, unless you want to count a, this feet. No head, nothing. You know, it's, it's G1. So this here... As I showed you open it earlier, this becomes a shield. It's kind of like the default way for any type of thing like this. Oh, it, it, it's a shield. Um, and he kind of put it in his hand, and it's not really much of a shield. What I do with it is I keep it folded like this. And because of his legs being weak, um, I kind of shove it in there. And that has helped stabilize him so he doesn't fall over on my shelf. So that, that's what I do. Um, may work for you. Let me get that in there. You get that in just right and kind of close the legs on it. It will hold. So let's get into a comparison with his cartoon model here, which is, I think it's a good comparison. Uh, actually really close, I think, to his cartoon model. Really cool. There he is with Sandstorm. Again, I think they're comparable. Here he is with the Titans Return version. <laughs> so he's he's a decent sized G1 figure. But yeah, he is definitely a favor of mine. I just I love him. I love him as the robot. I think he's just a really cool character to have. Um, so let's get into the final thoughts. So, like most triple changers, he's fun. That's first and foremost. He's fun to transform. He does have these big accessories, and these days could be expensive trying to replace him because the chrome wears out kind of quickly on him. He's, he's just covered in chrome. But he's a very well-constructed toy, and it's, it's just a fantastic, fun mold. As a character, I think he's really cool. And while the, the tanker does kind of lend a little to the imagination. The airplane mode is pretty good. Overall, I completely re recommend this guy if you're into triple changers or G1 at all. He's super fun to have. But find one that is, is really nice. If you want a vintage one, can be difficult. Now, there is a KO out there. Um, I haven't handled it myself, but it should have good chrome and should suffice your needs if you can't find a, a really good one. Anyway, I appreciate you stopping by and checking out this video, and I'll see you in my next review.